Welcome science enthusiasts to another exciting video on cell membrane function. Today we will discuss exocytosis, a bulk transport mechanism which transports materials out of cells. When something is synthesized, let's say a protein, enzyme, or hormone, or some other kind of waste material is produced, it needs to move out of the cell. And this outside movement of material is called exocytosis. I hope you understand the concept. Here is the proper definition of exocytosis. You can take a screenshot for your notes. Now let's see how it happens in the cell. So for that, we need a cell, and then we need a material that needs to be transported out, it could be anything. Let's say this cell has synthesized a protein. The Golgi complex packs this protein into a package, and this would be transported out of the cell like this. But it's not a simple process. Here are the stages of exocytosis. Let's see them one by one. The first stage is vesicle formation. A vesicle is basically a vacuole, which ultimately fuses with the membrane and excretes its content. But how is it formed? Let's again use the protein example. Let's say cells need to excrete insulin. It's a hormone that controls sugar levels in the blood. So, when blood sugar levels rise, cells need to release insulin. Insulin is synthesized through the process of transcription and translation. The Golgi complex plays a crucial role in modifying, sorting, and packaging the protein. It receives the newly synthesized insulin from the endoplasmic reticulum, processes it, and then packages it into small membrane-bound sacs called vesicles. These vesicles are now labeled and loaded, ready for export. This precise packaging ensures that insulin is delivered outside the cell exactly when and where it's needed. After the vesicle is formed, it needs to move toward the cell membrane. This vesicle contains the material that has to go out of the cell, like insulin. The movement happens inside the cell along tiny tracks called the cytoskeleton. Special proteins help the vesicle travel safely to the membrane. Think of it like a delivery cart moving on tracks to reach the gate. Once the vesicle reaches near the cell membrane, it's ready for the next step, docking. Now the vesicle has reached the cell membrane. Before it can release its contents, it needs to dock. This means it attaches to the membrane, like a ship docking at a port. Special proteins on the vesicle and the membrane help them stick together. These proteins work like locks and keys to make sure the vesicle connects at the right spot. Once the vesicle is docked, it gets ready to fuse with the membrane and push the material out. After docking, the vesicle fuses with the cell membrane. This means the vesicle's outer layer joins with the membrane's layer. They become one, creating an opening. Through this opening, the material inside the vesicle is released outside the cell. This is how proteins like insulin are sent into the blood. After the release, the vesicle membrane becomes part of the cell membrane. Here you can see all the stages put together. So, exocytosis occurs continuously in our body, but it's not always the same. There are two main types of exocytosis. Constitutive exocytosis and regulated exocytosis. First let's discuss constitutive exocytosis. It is a continuous process where materials are secreted out of the cell without any external signal. It happens by default in all cells to maintain normal functions. It occurs in all eukaryotic cells, especially in cells that are constantly renewing their membrane or releasing proteins regularly, like fibroblasts and epithelial cells. Some of example of constitutive exocytosis are the secretion of collagen by fibroblast cells for building connective tissue delivery of lipids and proteins to the cell membrane, and release of plasma proteins like albumin by liver cells. The second type of regulated exocytosis. It is a process where materials are released only when the cell receives a specific signal, like a hormone or nerve impulse. It does not happen all the time. It's triggered when needed. It occurs in specialized secretory cells such as endocrine cells, which release hormones nerve cells and pancreatic cells. Some of the examples of regulated exocytosis are, 
release of insulin from pancreatic beta cells when blood sugar rises, release of neurotransmitters from neurons when a nerve signal arrives, and secretion of digestive enzymes by the pancreas during digestion. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of both types of exocytosis. Feel free to pause and take a screenshot for your study notes. Now, you've seen how essential exocytosis is for the cell to function properly. But, like any delivery system, things can go wrong. Imagine a supply chain disruption. If the system isn't working properly, it can cause some serious problems in the body. For example, if neurotransmitters aren't released properly during exocytosis, it can affect your nervous system and lead to things like neurological disorders. A malfunction in regulated exocytosis can contribute to conditions like Parkinson's disease, where the proper release of chemicals in the brain gets messed up. Similarly, hormonal imbalances can occur if the cells aren't able to release hormones at the right time. Insulin release, which is regulated by exocytosis, is a prime example. Disruptions can lead to diabetes, where the body can't manage sugar levels properly. Now that we've discussed how things can go wrong, let's quickly bring it back to how exocytosis is working in your body right now. When you're feeling stressed, your body releases adrenaline through regulated exocytosis. It's like an urgent alert system that gets the message to your body to react quickly. Your heart rate increases, your breathing becomes faster, this whole process is triggered by the release of specific molecules, thanks to exocytosis. So, to wrap things up, exocytosis is critical for maintaining balance in your body. Whether it's sending out essential materials like hormones, proteins, or neurotransmitters, or even getting rid of waste, exocytosis ensures everything runs smoothly. But when things go wrong, it can lead to serious health issues, making this cellular process even more important to understand. That brings us to the end of the topic on exocytosis. But before you go, let's quickly understand why exocytosis is called a bulk transport mechanism. It's because it transports large quantities of materials at once, unlike other transport methods like diffusion or osmosis, which handle only small molecules. Cells also perform the opposite process, known as endocytosis. The word, endo, means, inside, and in endocytosis, materials move into the cell. This is also a type of bulk transport. To learn more about endocytosis in detail, watch this video. I'll see you there.